What difference do you observe between both the farmers? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain why the wages for farm laborers in Indian villages are less than the minimum wages set by the government. Differentiate the source of capital for small farmers from that of medium and large farmers. State some ways to increase non-farm production activities in villages. This is Deen Dayal, a large farmer in the village of Palampur. He has 11 hectares of land which is intensively cultivated using modern farming methods. There are 10 other families in Palampur like Deen Dayal who cultivate more than 10 hectares of land. This is Sham, a medium farmer who cultivates his 4 hectares of land using modern farming method. There are another 50 families like Sham who cultivate more than 2 hectares of land. This is Govind who has 1.5 hectares of unirrigated land and has to work hard with his two sons to earn his livelihood. There are another 350 families like Govind in the village. Ramu and Rukmi are farm laborers. They have been working for Deen Dayal for the last 10 years. There are another 50 families like Ramu and Rukmi in the village. In these examples, how is the land distributed in the village? It is clear from the examples that not all the people in the village are engaged in agriculture or have sufficient land for cultivation. Have a look at the pie chart to know the overall pattern in our country. About 80% of the farmers in our country are small farmers who just own about 36% of the total cultivated land. On the other hand, the medium and large farmers that comprise 20% of the total farmers own 64% of the cultivated land. Now, look at Govin's family. He has 1.5 hectares of land which is divided between his two sons with each son getting just 0.75 hectares each. Do you think they are able to earn their livelihood cultivating such small piece of land? Govind's sons are not able to make a living from their land. They started working in the brick-making factory in the nearby village. Now, let us look at Deen Dayal. He purchased a thresher and a harvester last month. He is able to complete his work in less time with less labor. Do you think Ramu and Rukmi will find work in Deen Dayal's farm now? No. Ramu and Rukmi will not get sufficient work in farm now. They have to start work as daily wage laborers and must regularly look for work. However, working as farm laborers too is not profitable. Farm laborers do not have a right or the crops grown on the land. They are paid wages by the farmer for whom they work. Wages can be in cash or in kind. Example, crop. Though the minimum wages for a farm labourer set by the government is rupees 60 per day, wages vary widely from region to region, from crop to crop, from one farm activity to another. There is heavy competition for work among the farm labourers as they are large in numbers. This is the reason why the wages for farm labourers in Indian villages is less than minimum wages. Thus, farm labourers are among the poorest people in a village who come from landless families or families cultivating small plots of land. Now, let us look at the sources of capital for the farmers. Govind's son, Hamtu, does not have enough capital for buying seeds, pesticides and farm instruments to cultivate his 0.75 hectares of land. How do you think Hamtu gets the capital? Hamtu has to borrow rupees 3000 from the large farmer, Deen Dayal, who agrees for the loan at an interest of 20% for four months. In return, Hamtu also promises to work in Deen Dayal's farm for removing weeds and applying pesticide at rupees 35 per day. Why do you think Hamtu agrees to work for such low wages? As getting a loan is difficult for a small farmer, Hamtu is left with no option. 
In contrast to the small farmers, the medium and large farmers have many options. They even get bank loans to purchase capital-intensive agricultural implements such as tractors, combined harvesters, etc. as they are able to provide necessary documents required for loans. Moreover, the medium and large farmers have their own savings from farming. How do you think they have their own savings? Suppose a farmer with a large piece of land produces wheat in his farm. He retains a part of the wheat for the family's consumption and sells the surplus wheat in the market. Small farmers like Govind and his sons have little or no surplus. But farmers like Deen Dayal and Sham have enough surpluses. Thus, it is the medium and large farmers who supply wheat to the market. A part of the earnings is saved and kept for buying capital for the next season. Some large farmers even offer loan to the small farmers as we saw in the case of Hamtu. Some farmers might also use the savings to buy cattle, trucks or to set up shops which gives rise to other non-farming activities. Can you name some non-farm production activities in villages? Dairy farming, opening small shops, establishing small-scale manufacturing and providing transport facilities for farming and manufacturing goods are some of the non-farm activities in villages. Dairy farming is a common activity in many families in rural India. People feed their buffaloes on various kinds of grass and the jowar and bajra they grow during the rainy season. Milk is sold to nearby villages. Presently, people engaged in various manufacturing activities have been increasing in recent years. Can you think of some manufacturing activities carried out in rural areas? Small food processing units, rice and wheat mills, weaving, jaggery making, etc. are done on a small scale. They are carried out mostly at home or in the fields with the help of family labour with few exceptions of hired labour. Some people in rural India are traders or shopkeepers who buy various goods from wholesale markets in the cities and sell them in the villages. Have you seen a village store? What type of items they sell in such stores? Small general stores in village sell various items such as rice, wheat, sugar, tea, oil, biscuits, soap, toothpaste, batteries, candles, notebooks, pens, pencils, etc. Another sector that may help rural poor is transport. There are a variety of vehicles on the roads connecting village to village and village to urban areas. What types of transportation we find in rural areas? Rickshawalas, Tongawalas, Jeeps, Tractors, truck drivers and people driving the traditional bullock carts and bogies are people in transport services. Now, look at another situation. Recall the farm labourer Ramu and Rukmi. Suppose both get cheap loans under a government scheme. They purchase two buffaloes with the money. Now, they earn by selling buffalo's milk. With the little surplus amount they earn, Ramu made a wooden cart driven by the buffaloes. Now, they use the cart to transport various items such as clay for potters, sugarcane for the jaggery making unit and jaggery to the market in the small town nearby. Now, Ramu and Rukmi are able to earn more than what they used to some years ago. What do you think are the major factors involved in the economic development? Cheap loan and development of good roads Connection with urban areas helped in improving the economic condition of Ramu and Rukmi. As more villages get connected to towns and cities through good roads, transport and telephone, it is possible that the opportunities for non-farming activities in the villages would increase in our country.